Okay, so what we're gonna do in this scene is we're gonna create some cool light effects. So you can see I've got something else going on over there, which I'll show you in a bit. But what we want is we want this gobo or this shadowing effect onto our scene. So I'll put down a ground plane that's just got the Lambert on it. I'm going to create, let's go create, this is a legacy, so standard Maya light. So the gobo, some of these light filters only work with the standard Maya lights, specifically this spotlight. I don't know why. But position that down so that's about 90 degrees down. I'll leave the intensity to one. However, I scroll down to Arnold, then I'll change the exposure here. So let's do like 20. Um, oh, I've already got a render tab up. It's my hard shade. What is this? Got a render. No, that's a sequence render. And that yeah, beautiful. Cool. So that's pretty bright. I'm going to take that down to 12. Sweet. And in fact, I just remembered I have an atmosphere, so I'm going to remove that in the render settings. Cool. So that's what you should have. It doesn't look very good, very interesting. I might change the penumbra angle. If we look at the right, sh uh, the light shape on the right hand side, it's just to soften it out, so I'll put that to 10. Cool. Let's put it back to 20 on the exposure. Maybe 18. Mm. Okay, that should be fine. So what we're mainly looking for is we have a few different light filters. Uh, these are actually similar to the ones that are used in Katana. So the barn door and the gobo are available. I'm not sure what the lights allow for barn door, but the spotlight, according to the Maya documents, you can only use a gobo and a spotlight. And a gobo is essentially a cookie cutter. So now with that created, um, it doesn't actually add anything into your scene. So by outliner, you won't see anything there added, unlike the light blocker. So the light blocker will stop light from hitting certain pieces of geometry. But here we're actually putting something right in front of the light and then projecting outwards. Okay, so now we have this Gobo tab. Um, so we can put our texture into the slide map and then control the density. So. Firstly, I will just go to File. I'm going to load in a picture of a fan. Uh, where did I save that? Um, I'll go with this one. So we can see there, it's got black and white JPEG. Nothing special. So we call that fan. Hit render, see what happens. And there we have it. So now our light, the actual shape. Um, that is emitting is exactly our JPEG. I'm just going to double check that image. So because this is uniform, it's hard to tell what's right and wrong, but this would actually be incorrect. So I'd need to invert that so that the blades are um, are stopping the light or not emitting light, essentially. Because if we look at this right hand side, this sample, so the white is technically on, 
and the black is off. So the black has a zero, a value of zero. The white has a value of one. So we're saying we want to emit light from everywhere but the blades. That's why I inverted that down here in the effects tab. So just be aware that you can invert images within Maya. So even if you do it incorrectly, um, you know, not a big deal. So that's good. That's good. We can see that. We also have this density here, which is quite sensitive. As I gradually uh, raise this up, how high before everything changes? It's just affecting how much. Uh, it's kind of playing with the emission. So if I put that to one, there's nothing. So let's do 0.9. So you just fade it off a bit. Or if you wanted to alter this image more that's being projected, then you could put in another image in there. So you could fade it off further, perhaps. Or just do it in your original image. So I'm going to turn, keep that zero. And there we go. So we've got a few placement things. So if you wanted this animated, then believe you would just have to animate the spotlight unfortunately or animate the image sequence but because I don't have that set up I'm just going to animate over 10 frames and you see there we have this perfect cutout. So there we go. Um, and yeah, these values here will affect the actual um, the slide that's been added to the texture. And then you do have a few different blend modes. There's more of a description on the manual online about these. Um, I think it depends what else is going on in your scene and if you have atmospherics whether you you need to play with these so you can have a bit more of a blend with an ad these are um, similar to all all standard software like photoshop and nuke have these all built in so you can play around with these a bit more um, they're just uh, basic maths plugins for them so we're going to leave that and if you want some cool effects like let's see actually before I turn this on I can show you something I did earlier um, so with animated sequences so here's a good example so let's say you've got this idea for a brilliant film it's about um, you know a couple that are in love and they die and there's the director wants a shot of them at the bottom of the sea and you can't afford to render all that caustics and stuff so there you go um, we've just put in that spotlight with a go boat someone else is dying to the bottom of the sea maybe this is Saving Private Ryan V2 based in Uganda in the Sonic universe so there we go the spotlight with a go boat this sequence I ripped from YouTube and altered it in Nuke, made it black and white. Um, so this looks fairly mediocre. It's an interesting effect. And if you don't want to add any more render time or atmospherics, because you know, ain't nobody got time for that. You can add a bit of glow, so we get a glow effect. So there we go, a bit better. So we've gone from before. And then after, so it's almost like that old technique of um, putting Vaseline on the lens in the old old school films. Wonderful. Okay, and then if you want to judge it up a bit more, go to town on this on this epic 
rendition of Saving Private Ryan. Then you can tweak it even further. Look, fake, fa va um, can't even talk. Fake volumetrics. So, if you want to be a cheapskate and do that, took the render, color corrected it, added more contrast. God rays, look how terrible that looks. So, I just blurred it. Now we're starting to get something interesting. Add a bit of glow over that, screen it over, bibbidi bosh. Visual effects. There you go, just saved a bunch of render time. And this took about 10 seconds of frame, so no one's going to pay for cloud rendering. It's too expensive. Cool, cool. So we're there. So we've got that. So we know we can animate it. I'd probably animate the image sequence if I were you, but you know, do what you want. Um, let's go to the render settings. Let's get some volume up in here. So I, here's one I made earlier. I didn't change anything. That's a lie. I changed the density. It was on zero. So now it's 0 0.02. Wow. Look at that. Let's look at it from the side. That's all we care about. So it's a pure cutout of that. And my keeps spazzing out. It keeps rendering over and over and over. So turn on progressive. I think it's this one, but that's blanked out. Let's see what it does. It's normally this one if it just keeps re-rendering itself because it can't handle the awesome 3D going on. Let's hit render. It's updating. It's thinking about it. There we go. Epic. So now it would be a battle between, you know, the exposure of the light, let's save that, and the attenuation of your atmospherics. So let's play there. Let's be conservative. Uh, actually, screw it. If I do 0 0.1 in the attenuation, will it all disappear? No, it didn't. So when I was using the, uh, the light standard light blocker, it was having a much greater effect that I hated. But this looks pretty cool. My is not enjoying this because I'm recording at the same time at 2K. God damn it. Stop that. Yeah. Okay, play, play. I'm actually going to raise the attenuation to 0 0.25. And let's do a full scene update just because it's not having a great time. Wonderful. Okay, before and after. Look at that. We're getting these clear cut lines. So this, um, this stencil or cookie cutter probably needs some blurring. I don't think you can blur it within Maya. It'd be cool if you could. So yeah, that's the gobo. That's how you cut things out. Um, and bonus feature, let's take a look at this epic scene on the left-hand side. So we've got you know, this war scene. Um, one of our comrades is dying, he's falling down the ocean. And so this light here has a gobo of the animated water. Our oh, scene updates is on, that's why. God damn it. Wow. So epic. Let's get a better shot, better render of this.
Right there. So this is how you can spend hours of your time making stupid stuff like this. Come on. Surrender. It's because it keeps trying to update the scene at the same time. It can't, it can't handle it. Let's do a full scene update. Cool. Look at that. He's not even in the light. God damn it. Let's go further down. Let's get an epic angle. So full scene update. Epic. Look at that. Look at all these gob rays. And that costs nothing. That costs eight seconds to render that. Yeah, it's a bit noisy. You could just add the, um, oh yeah, pro tip. <laughs> Save render time. Because it's eight seconds, but we don't have eight seconds. We need this fast. We need this for the, the people of YouTube. So I'll turn on this optic denoiser. This will do a post process of denoising our render. I could even put up the AA samples because even when this is smoothed out, it still could look pretty um, lumpy, I want to say. Um, we'll smooth the noise out, but you can st still see it at the end result. This is only half HD, so this is 960 by 540. So that took 10 seconds, so we added two seconds render time by adding this denoise. Uh, let's take a look. Look at that before. Let's do it before and after Epic. So there you go. That is how to make volumetric lighting in Arnold for Maya. And I hope you enjoyed it.